As photographers, there are things we really wish non-photographers would know, especially our clients, because it feels like sometimes we're really misunderstood, especially when clients do things like put filters over our photos or haggle on already really low prices. And so today I wanted to kind of make an informative video for clients and non-photographers, all the things I think you would want them to know so that they can be more compassionate about our craft and understand the process a little bit more. This video is brought to you by Squarespace, which makes websites for just about any purpose. Whether it's a personal project, a photography portfolio, or a business like a doctor's office or a restaurant, Head to squarespace.com slash Chelsea, where you can set up your website completely free. Try it out, make sure you love it. And if you do, you can use the coupon code Chelsea to get 10% off. That's C-H-E-L-S-E-A. So go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea today and get a domain, your own custom domain name with your own custom email address, set up a store, uh, take appointments from clients, and you'll have it all done in just a few minutes. But Thanks. you even have a client area where you can send your clients to see their photos and a store where they can buy prints and things. So it's kind of like a one-stop shop for your photo business. I like it a lot. All right, so the first thing that I think we all want non-photographers and our clients to know is that it's not the camera. It's the person. And there have been so many memes, so I know everyone has experienced this, where someone sees your photo and they say, oh, you must have a nice camera, and it like crushes you. You're like, I've been practicing for so long. I've made so many mistakes to get to this point. I've read books, I've watched YouTube, I've taken classes in person. Like, my camera's good, but it's the operator. And I've seen this happen in real life where like, we've offered to take free photos for friends and they said, oh, no, that's okay. My friend has a camera he's got kicking around. Well, they've done this YouTube video a million times. Who takes better pictures, the amateur with the professional camera or the professional with an iPhone? Yeah. Yeah, I'd rather have a professional with just a phone. Yeah, in those contests, it's always the skilled photographer because photography is more about things like composition, storytelling, lighting, posing, styling, outfits. All of that far outweighs the quality of the actual equipment. Yeah, so if you're a client watching this, if you're watching this on your favorite photographer's social media, I have to let you know there's so much more that goes into the process and the camera gear is expensive, but it's the mind of the photographer making the photo. If you're buying concert tickets, would you change your mind and just be like, oh no, I have a guitar at home. I'll make my own I'm probably concert. just as good, yeah. That's what karaoke is and none of us like that. That's why you don't go watch karaoke. You go watch a good performer do a concert. The next point we want to make is that good photos take time, like a lot of time. Yeah, and this one, I see this happen when people try to hire me often. They'll say, I saw your portfolio, my Squarespace portfolio plug, and I liked your pictures. Can you do that for me? And I always feel like a little uncomfortable because um, they want me to show up for 10 minutes and take a picture, and I don't know how to tell them that the picture they like, I went to that same location 20 times at the right time. So I make sure I go during sunset or sunrise, the golden hour. I look at maps to see where the sun will be rising and setting, where the moon will be coming up. It can often take weeks of planning and waiting for the perfect date, the perfect weather, the perfect conditions. And so I, I don't just show up and get a photo often. Um, I go to the same place hundreds of times and then I put the best photo on my portfolio. And so when you see a photographer's portfolio you're seeing the best of and that's what they're capable of but it doesn't mean that they can create that for you in 10 minutes if you have them come to your house real quick that's not really the way it works and what we see is somebody thinks okay well it's gonna take half an hour fifty dollars an hour seems like a reasonable wage so let's yeah. offer them twenty five dollars after it's not all it's not gonna take that long yeah except that there's so much more time that goes into creating a good photo and that brings me to our next point is that you don't see the hardest work that we do you might see the thirty minutes that were there for your photo shoot or maybe the hour but there's so much that happens before the shoot and after the shoot well first there's the years of practice that went into that all of the equipment, thousands of dollars of equipment that has to be purchased and insured and maintained, um, but also all the planning around lighting. 
scheduling yourself, um, owning a vehicle, putting gas in it and transporting yourself to that destination. That's all going to take some time. Well, how long does it take us to just pack our gear up for a shoot? I mean, we test all of the batteries, we test the SD cards, we're getting together our camera bodies, picking the right lenses, packing them up. You know, it can take us 20, 30 minutes to make sure all of our gear is working properly. And we test it. I mean, you don't want your photographer to show up and say the battery's dead or the SD card's full or, oops, this camera stopped working. The fact that they show up with properly working gear means they've been putting the time into the maintenance and that's a part of it. And if the photographer makes it look easy, that's because they're very skilled, not because it is easy. It's yeah. actually all very, very hard. Photographers also have to be IT people. Like we have multiple computers and storage networks and backups. And yeah. it is all of that infrastructure that allows us to simply hand files to you 100% of the time without any kind of loss or interruption. And this reminds me, a friend just texted us and said, I have a portrait shoot tomorrow. I'm doing headshots and my flash isn't working properly. And she had to spend the evening before the shoot like making sure that her flash was gonna work properly for the shoot. And it took her hours of troubleshooting and she had to fix something, but she was prepared so that she could come to your shoot and make it look easy. And then of course you drive there, so you have that time. You see the shoot part, you go home, you unload the photos, you upload them, and then there's the culling. We have to go through every single photo to make sure that we choose the best ones and that can take a very long time so there's there's a lot of things you don't see oh and then the editing right. editing takes so long and it's a skill that takes years to develop yeah you know you pay a doctor a high amount per hour because you know that person spent years developing their skills getting a degree but photographers take years to develop each aspect of this from the marketing to the planning to the working with the clients and the posing and the lighting as well as the post-processing and the maintenance of the gear. All of that takes years and years of skill that they didn't get paid for. So right. when you do pay for an hour of your time, of, when you do pay a photographer for an hour of their time, you're also paying them a little bit for the years and years of work that they did preparing for that hour. Yeah, and I see that some photographers try to be really good about keeping their prices low and that's when you end up with those very formulaic shoots and I get why they do that they basically have a set and you get like a 20 minute block of time and they're just moving people through like it's like an assembly line because a lot of people only want to pay hundred dollars which is incredibly low because I've had people reach out to me and say someone wants to charge me a whole hundred dollars for a photo shoot that is such a low price that's too low and so people try to do these, photographers try to do these assembly line type of mini sessions and uh, they're trying to work with you. If they're already booking you for a mini session, they've got it all figured out and they're probably charging you as low of a price as they possibly can. So I, I don't think any photographer is overcharging. No, that's impossible. Um, when I first started professional photography, I had an edge because I was able to set up a website because I was also working in IT like computer stuff yeah. and you had to code HTML and so I could make a website and share my pictures online in an era when people didn't know how to do that. So that took me years of work but nowadays you don't have to become a computer nerd or spend years learning HTML. You can go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea, set up a beautiful website in literally minutes, drag your pictures in, make it perfect and professional for clients. It'll look great on mobile devices, computers, tablets. You'll be able to view the analytics on any sort of device and see where people are coming from so you can refine your marketing and better reach clients. And they'll be able to book sessions with you and even pay in advance all through the Squarespace website. So check it out. Get that professional website and domain at squarespace.com slash Chelsea. Try it out for free. And when you love it, the coupon code CHELSEA will get you 10% off. That's C-H-E-L-S-E-A. Thank you, Squarespace. The next point I want to make is that you get what you pay for. So I've had people come to me and complain about their photographer and say, like, I was expecting better pictures. What do you think of these? I paid $100. Here are the photos. And they're fine. And, you know, they look good. It was $100. I'm sure they tried to fit them in pretty quickly, use their presets, and, you know, take some photos. You, if you want really unique,
photos that look like the best pictures you see on social media, you have to know that hair and makeup is going into that, uh, figuring out wardrobe, like scheduling the clients during the perfect light in a beautiful location and then spending lots of time with them. You're going from a shoot, a hundred dollar shoot that you know you're there for 20 minutes to a shoot that's going to take hours and the price is going to go up. If you want unique amazing pictures let your photographer do the work and give them time and it's going to cost you more money. So don't expect the best work you've ever seen if you're paying fifty, a hundred dollars. It's just not going to happen. Photography is not a commodity. You know, if you're looking for gas to put in your car, you could check a couple of different gas stations and find the best price, and you're probably getting the same quality gas either way. Photography is not like that. Professional photography has a lot of first-time photographers who don't have an established reputation and are willing to work for less than a living wage. And that kind of brings everybody down because so many clients can't easily distinguish the brand new photographer who's not making minimum wage if they were to add everything up per hour yeah. from the experienced photographer who is actually supporting themselves and their family and has bills to pay and knows how much time actually goes into everything. Yeah, and I'm in a few photo groups and I've heard clients say before like a thousand dollars, who's going to pay that? People pay that and more. I'm in groups where photographers get flown across the country for a boudoir shoot and they buy books and prints and end up paying, paying $20,000 for a shoot. There are people that have money. You photographers should know that. Your skills are valued and there are clients who will pay. So if you are stuck in this rut where you can only find people that pay $50, don't be afraid to like break away from that and charge more because there are people that have the money and do appreciate your skills. Okay, here's another thing, Tony, and I get this one all the time. I really need people to know we specialize. So when you see our work and you love it and you want to hire us, I love that. I get people contacting me all the time and saying, I love the photos I saw in your portfolio. Will you take pictures of my baby? I love babies, but I do not take baby photos. I've done enough to get some experience, um, but that's a really difficult job. You have to be good with babies. There's usually props involved. You know, you're using different lighting setups. It takes a different set of skills. And so if you know a photographer you admire, hire them for the type of photography that they do. They're specializing. If they do portraits, like corporate portraits, that's what you want to hire them for, not a wedding. Um, and I really have to say, you can't just hire anyone for a wedding. I mean, you can, but that is such a difficult, specialized job. Well, I hang out with wildlife photographers, yeah. and I have heard this many times. Their niece is getting married and said, oh, okay, can you come photograph my wedding? Like, you shouldn't ask a wildlife photographer to photograph your wedding. They might technically be able to do it, but it's such a specialized skill that the wildlife photographer might not even know all the skills that they need to photograph a wedding, and vice versa. Wedding photographers aren't going to be good at wildlife. You wouldn't go into a Chinese restaurant and ask them to make a pizza, right? If they did, it probably wouldn't be that great. Yeah. Because photographers are specialized and you should respect that. Sometimes I do it. I've done it. I did a cake smash for a friend and I was like, don't tell anybody. Just don't tell anybody this is me. I'll do it for you for free, but we're not talking about it. <laughs> Photography is also about producing the end result. And so often the end result is going to be a print on the wall. So many times clients want to skip that whole process because photographers often mark up the cost of the print. Yeah. So what clients will ask for is the digital file. They want a JPEG because they want to take it to Walmart or they want to print it out on their HP printer. You're going to get bad results. You should allow the photographer to own the entire workflow from capturing the images to handing you the finished work. Because as photographers, we will take pictures thinking about the printing process. And we also develop relationships with printers and print formats. We have probably printed eight or nine different types of prints from printing on glass, from printing on metal, printing on paper. Sometimes it's behind a quarter inch or half an inch of polyurethane, different framing techniques, as well as different lighting techniques for the print. Print making is its own skill that clients should appreciate. It's not as simple as just running something through your HP printer.
Yeah, actually, speaking of my friend, I told you I did the cake smash photos for her for free. I did just give her the digital files. And I went to her house, and she had them printed and framed, and all of the colors were wrong. Like the baby's pink skin was like green. I, w I asked her, I was like, what the heck happened? And she said, I brought them to a, this store, and they did it. And I said, all right, well, we'll print them at home on our printer so that it would look better. But the prints are important. Let your photographer take you through the process of taking the pictures and the final product. And like our friend Sam Shannon, we had her make our, um, we did this like series like, and she talks all about how she has all these samples of different prints. So we get to touch the canvas and make sure it's well constructed. We get to make sure it's printing on there in a way that's gonna last. We get to see that it's not going to warp and that it's framed properly. We put time into finding good products and they're usually from places that only professionals can get it printed like Miller Photo. Um, trust us, let us print, pay a little bit more for the better print. You're, it's going to look better on your wall, you're going to keep it longer and you're going to appreciate it. And if you find a photographer who's willing to hand you just the files and let it let you print them yourself, understand it doesn't matter if they allow you to do that, you're still not going to get re good results. Because yeah. like you said, we've made that mistake. We had to learn that the hard way that it's important for us to control the entire printing process. And we'll do that now because we also care about our reputation. Yeah. And as professionals, that's something we have to do. We can't let people say, oh, Tony and Chelsea took this picture and then show some Walmart printed photo that's off color. Yeah, and I've actually, for that reason, I've stopped doing free work. I've done like a few weddings for people or like shoots like that and it always ends up not being work I'm proud of because I have paid work I have to do. I don't want to do a free job that's getting in the way of my other job. I want to take pictures I'm proud of, and so it puts us in a bad situation. You're asking us to underperform, and it's uncomfortable. And then there's the other thing, too, where people ask for all of the raw files. They think that they're going to find some picture you overlooked, and you're asking us something that's really difficult. You're asking us to put our worst work out into the world and for you to curate it. And that's not really fair. You have to let us choose the photos we want to give you. We have our contracts. We, we tell you how many pictures we're going to get you. We promise we're giving you as many good choices as we can. And uh, you just have to leave that in our hands. Yeah, they often want to, well, often what happens is the photographer will explain, you know, part of why I have to charge you this much is yeah. I have to put this time into post-processing. So they'll say, well, it's okay. I have Lightroom or I edit photos on my yeah. phone all the time. I'll just take that, just hand me the original files. And photographers often will do this, but I believe it's a mistake for everybody. Yeah, it's not good. First, we shoot with post-processing in mind. Many photographers will do something like they'll deliberately underexpose their photos, knowing that they're going to raise it in post. Uh, or perhaps I, I will shoot continuously with varying uh, focusing so that I know I'll click the shutter four times knowing I'm going to get one in focus. Yeah. And then in post-processing, I'll know to carefully look and pick out the one that's in focus because sometimes that's just the most reliable way to do it. So I but you know, don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, and I know any non-photographer listening to this right now is like, what did he just say? If you made it this far, you don't know what you're talking about. Like, you don't know what we're talking about. It's because it's way more involved than it looks. So, We've written four books on post-processing yeah. in Lightroom and Photoshop. Yeah. Because there's so much involved. Yeah. And hopefully photographers out there have at least read those books and developed those skills. But it's something that takes hundreds of hours and tens of thousands of photos to really get good at. Yeah. You can do some cool stuff editing pictures on your phone. And it can look okay on your phone. But it's not going to look good printed bigger. Those things yeah. always fall apart. But it's not just about if, it, if they like it or if it looks good. Like You have to respect the photographer that you hired. You can't just take their picture and then put your own edits on it. It's like painting over another person's painting. It's really disrespectful. It's very rude. And I've heard many upset photographers say that their client took their pictures and then put more filters on top of them. If you don't like the way a photographer processes a picture, don't hire them in the first place. Or ask them if you said, I, I want these to be black and white or I want some to look washed out. Ask if it's possible for them to do it. But don't, don't ruin their work. Don't do that. It's, it's hurtful. Yeah. Would you slap a filter on the Mona Lisa? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So those are the ones we thought of, just a few. If you're a photographer and there are other things clients have done that have made you feel like they don't understand the process and you wish they did, let us know. Maybe there's room for a part two. If you are a client and you watch this, 
thank you. That means you want to respect the people that you're hiring, and I really appreciate you taking the time to understand what goes on behind the scenes that a lot of clients don't understand. And thank you to Squarespace for making this podcast possible. You can make your own portfolio at squarespace.com slash Chelsea and get a 14-day free trial. If you decide you'd like to buy it, I think you will. Use the coupon code CHELSEA to get 10% off. That's C-H-E-L-S-E-A. And uh, yeah, thanks Squarespace and leave your comments down below. Bye.